for the past couple of weeks, I've been educating myself. I've been educating myself on what's been going on, um, how it affects people, how I can do to help, and how I can address it. Prior to 2020, I never had a platform with which that I could speak on these issues on. It's, I only really started building it truly in January when I started this channel. I did have an Instagram and I did have a Twitter, but I wasn't really active on those. Now that I have been developing a platform, although my platform is very small, with what has been going on with the Black Lives Movement and these campaigns against racism and police brutality that are going on all over the world right now, I can't not say something, especially when it's something I truly believe in. And that's what this video is. My sister and I, we grew up in, um, our mother comes from a family that is part indigenous, which makes us Métis. So, and not all Métis look like we do, but because my sister and I do have white skin, we come off as normal white people, that we were told at a young age that other people, whether regardless of the skin color that they have, because we're white, that affords a certain amount of privilege to it. And I don't think it was that obvious growing up, but when you become an adult and you start noticing things, then you begin to realize certain things. And I will openly admit I have not done enough out of fear. But that's not good enough anymore. Not that it ever was, of course. <laughs> it never was, really. What I want this video to focus on is more so about listening and what I call the bandwagon with all of this. And this video is primarily addressed to white people, like myself. Um, are, you, are you really listening to what black people and indigenous people and people of color are saying? They're saying a lot of things, they're being very vocal about it, not that they haven't been vocal before, because trust me, they have been. But most of you, if you're white, never really gave a damn much un up until this point. So that's why I'm asking if you're listening. Like, it's, it's really good that you are, you know, all for this Black Lives Matter movement, you're protesting, you know, follow black creators, fo um, follow black authors, read books by black authors, yada, yada, yada. That's great, don't get me wrong, that's wonderful. But the problem is the bandwagon. Because a lot of times when stuff like this happens, hop on a bandwagon because it's the cool thing to do. It's the in thing to do. And once it's no longer cool, then you'll hop off of it and just walk away and pretend it doesn't exist and no longer give a shit. And you can't deny that because it's true. It's already started happening. It's been a few a couple weeks since this has started. My video is actually a little late, technically. But it's already, people are already slowing down on their posts and their reporting and their linking of important resources and organizations. It's already dying down a little bit. And this is not a good thing. This is, change doesn't happen immediately. It doesn't happen overnight. And just because some change has happened, doesn't mean it's okay to back down. This is something that has been going on for a very, very long time. People of color, but especially black and indigenous people who are disproportionately affected by this stuff the most, they're so sick of white people like you and I, if you are white and you're watching this, that you hop on a bandwagon with all of this, rah, 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 then you hop off of it. And then you don't care anymore whether that takes months, weeks, or in this case, even days. And then suddenly they're second-class citizens again. No one really cares anymore. It took a black man dying on camera and revealed to the world online before 
any of you bothered to go, oh, hey, this stuff happens. Of course it's been happening. It's been happening for decades, if not centuries. And only now you're caring because there's video evidence of it? You'll listen to a white person and you'll agree with what they say and you'll help them and stuff. You don't even need evidence. All they need to do is say something. But when it comes to a person of color, suddenly you need evidence to agree that there's racism being committed against them or police brutality committed against them. That, that, that's not cool, guys. I, I don't, I don't think I should need to tell you this, but I do. It is not cool. That is not how it should be. It's really good that there's a lot of bookstagrammers, book tweeters, booktubers, and so on, um, and authors and whatnot who are black or indigenous or other people of color that are getting lots of follows, getting lots of attention, and so on. But that normally dies down when the bandwagon falls away, too. People are following these... You're, you're following these people because it's a cool thing to do. So, of course, they're not going to take you seriously because the moment the bandwagon falls away, the numbers are going to drop because you no longer care. You should be reading their books and watching their content and following them because you really genuinely want to see what they put out, that you want to know them as a person. It should be a genuine thing that is not a, a once in a moment type thing. That is not something that they want. They don't want that. They want people who are genuine because otherwise your words are fluff. They mean absolutely nothing. Now, I, I mentioned fear a little bit back in my little rant here, and if you're a white person who hasn't spoken up, I can understand why you're afraid of it. But you have to understand that you have possibly the least to worry about when it comes to speaking out about something like this. Black and indigenous people of color, and, and even other people of color, depending on where they live and whatnot, they don't have that luxury. It, it, it's not a once an, an occasion thing. This is something that happens all the time. Like, how do you think they feel when they're always targeted by racism, that they're always abused or arrested unjustly or even murdered just because of the color of their skin even by police who are protectors of the peace who should be protecting them who should be treating them like everyone else and they're not because they see people with other skin colors as lesser than them what do you think of that what is your excuse for that there is no excuse for that. Your fear is nothing compared to theirs. And they don't get to turn it off. We do, because we have the privilege of being able to. But they can't. So many of them leave their houses every day or, or any moment of every day, multiple times, and they don't know if they're going to be targeted on random. They could be sitting in a car on the side of the road, not moving, and multiple cops could be coming up to them over the period of an hour or two asking to see their license when they're not moving because they're black. Because apparently, if they're black, they're a problem. Where's your excuses? Back when I started my channel, I remember I was starting to make a list of vampire novels to read because for those of you who are new to this channel that was that is what my channel specializes on primarily is vampire fiction and I was excited because I wanted to f to find out about vampire books from people of color and wanted to see what their interpretations were and how interesting they could be and I found out there's next to nothing like for the ones that I'm aware of right now, I could count on my two hands, just my two hands, these fingers, not even all of them, how many vampire novels by black or indigenous authors. 
and even other authors of color, you can add those in too. It doesn't, it, it doesn't add up past this. There, there's hardly anything out of hundreds of vampire books that have been published over the years, either traditional or self-publishing. The number of them that are from people of color is next to nothing. I've since added fantasy books and sci-fi books into the mix as well. And even that doesn't increase it by that many. White authors, white editors, white publishers dominate the publishing industry. Now, I've, I've always planned on featuring authors of color on and off over time. Um, it's definitely going to be a far more concentrated effort now because I am coming to a better realization as to how important it is. But this is something I always wanted to do. I don't feel like I need an excuse to feature black and indigenous creators and, and to amplify black voices. There, there are so many black creators that I've subbed to that you can, you can guarantee that I will continue to follow those people even after the bandwagon is gone. In fact, the bandwagon is already starting to take off. People are already starting to jump off. I'm not going to do that. And you can hold me to it. Now, make no mistake, I'm not claiming I'm perfect. I'm far from it. I am the last person you could say is perfect. But at least I'm putting forth an effort to learn and to, to grow as a person. That is the thing I think that white people need to understand is that people of color are not asking us to be perfect when it comes to stuff like this, when it comes to standing up for them, using our privilege to do that. They're not asking us to be perfect because, because perfect is not achievable. So don't even think that at all. They're just asking that we say something, that we do something. Because normally we don't. Let's be frank here, we don't. And it's shameful, absolutely shameful. All they're asking us to do, all, all people of color are asking us to do is to work on ourselves, to make ourselves better, to, to do better, to be better. To, to follow them, to watch them, to read their books, etc. Et because we genuinely want to. Not, not because it's a fad. Not because it's cool. But because you truly want to. And you can be damn sure they will call us on it if we don't. Depending on the circumstance, sometimes all that's needed is listening. Sometimes action is needed. Other times, all that's needed is to speak out and not stay silent. And I'd say all three of them apply to this case. If you're someone who is able and willing to go and do peaceful protests, you are free to do so. And then we, we are privileged to live in a day and age where because of the internet, we can do so many other things too. We can sign online petitions, we can donate to anti-racism organizations and organizations that provide uh, legal assistance and stuff like that. There are so many different ways that we can help out with stuff like this that we have no excuse to hop off the bandwagon at all. Like this, this, is, this is for the long haul, guys. And if you're not prepared to stick around for the long haul, that's on you. Because my channel is about reading books and writing books. I'm, I'm gonna steer off just a little bit, but this is this is still relevant, I promise. On Twitter about, I think it was last week, or very early this week, no, I'm pretty sure it was last week, uh, someone started a hashtag called publishing paid me, and the point of the hashtag was to highlight the disparity in advances in traditional publishing between white authors and authors of color, okay? And it, it, you should really check out those posts because the, the, it is, I knew they were bad. Like I, I did some research a while back there, and there was a, a video a while back 
that highlighted some of that for me, but I didn't have exact numbers. But there are many authors who have uh, willingly put up their uh, information on their advances for this, including an author I'm going to highlight for this video, uh, N.K. Jemison. And if you don't know who N.K. Jemison is, she is a author of science fiction and fantasy, a black author, and she's been very open about um, her advances in response to this hashtag. Um, she has won three Hugo Awards and I think at least one Nebula Award too. Um, she's written a few trilogies and a duology and she's got a new series that she's got one book out for so far. So it, it, she, she's, been, she's been around. She's been doing quite pretty good. Or at least it sounds like she's doing pretty good. And in terms of her writing and stuff, she is. But... <sighs> okay, so this is the information on her advances that she put out on her Twitter for the public to see, okay? I'm gonna read this off of my script here. So her first trilogy, the Inheritance Trilogy, um, consists of the books The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, uh, The Broken Kingdoms, and The Kingdom of Gods. And she received $40,000 for each of those books. So $112,000, okay. So her Dream Blood duology, consisting of the books The Killing Moon and The Shadowed Sun, she received $25,000 for each book, so 50000 total. For the Broken Earth trilogy, which consists of the books The Fifth Season, The Obelisk Gate, and The Stone Sky, she received $25,000 for each book, so 75000 And for her newest series, The Great Cities, of which uh, the, the current Currently, the only book in the series is The City We Became. Uh, she received $60,000 for each book. All right? It's not publicly known how many books are in that series as of yet, so it's... don't know how to... can't gauge exactly how much overall she's getting from that. For those of you who don't know how advances in publishing work, uh, and... An advance is what a publisher pays an author based on what they think the book will sell. So it, it's, um, it, it counts against the sales of the book, all right? So um, the author doesn't start seeing royalty checks until after the book has made enough money to earn the publisher back the money that they advanced to the author. And in, in publishing, this is called earning out your advance. All right, so you have to earn out before you see any royalties. You should also note that these advances are not given in all one lump sum at once. They're actually divided usually into two or three increments and over given out uh, depending on where the book is in the publishing process, usually over the course of a year or two, if not more. Her tweets do point out that Advances are different based on genre and age group. You know, she is a sci-fi and fantasy writer and science fiction and fantasy. They don't typically see very high advances compared to other genres like, say, romance. That typically sees very high advances because romance sells extremely well. And by the same token, writers of adult fiction don't see as high advances as writers of young adult fiction. So you have multiple factors that determine this as well. One could also argue the fact that a smaller advance is better because that means you earn out the advance faster and you start getting royalty checks faster. And, you know, she, she did uh, make mention that for, uh, that she earned out most of her advances relatively quickly, I think. So that, that part is good. But many writers like N.K. Jemisin want to write books for a living and she was still working a full-time job until 2016 when she mounted a successful patreon campaign that gave her more money than her job and therefore allowed her to quit her job and start writing full-time not publishing patreon 
Now, I, I agree with not putting all your eggs in one basket. Having multiple income sources is generally a good thing in case one goes belly up. But if you can, if you didn't already tell by Jemison's advance numbers and how they're divvied up, that's not enough money to live on. And there are white authors who, publishing their first books, debut white authors, who have received much higher advances. And then, I saw another Twitter post recently that was uh, shared by Jemison about someone who denied that white supremacy was a thing in publishing and that black and indigenous authors should be thankful that white editors and publishers take on their books and champion their books. There's more to it than that, but the, the essence of the post was is that it is quite literally a real life version of the white savior trope in fiction. And reading that post disgusted me. It really, really disgusted me that there are people who believe it. And yet, I know it's true. I know it's true. I have not known anyone personally who has publicly said something like that. But there you have it. My fellow whites, really, you, you need to understand. People of color, they do not need a savior. Nor do they want one. They don't need someone to champion them for them. They are real people, independent people like you and I. All they want is equality and respect. Not to be paraded around like some trophy. And yet that's all what a lot of you have been doing. Treating them as trophies. How do you think you would feel if someone did that to you? Thought of you as nothing but a trophy. Now, I'm. there's going to be a lot of links in the description below. These are primarily uh, Canadian organizations. Because for those of you who don't know, I am Canadian. And believe it or not, Canada does indeed have problems when it comes to racism and police brutality. And so I'll have, um, I'll have a couple general links below as well, but most of it will be Canadian organizations, nonprofit organizations that help fight against racism and provide legal aid and stuff like that. So if you have donated to a bunch of organizations in America or the UK or other countries and stuff already, and you're looking for more organizations to donate to, uh, by all means do that. They will be linked in the description below. I researched these up a little bit and uh, they will be down there for you. So to close out this video, a few things. Black lives matter, indigenous lives matter. Police brutality must come to an end and those who have committed these acts must be brought to justice. Stop being silent. Who cares if you're uncomfortable it is a time to be uncomfortable. An imperfect video or post is better than not saying anything at all. Stop asking black people to guide us in this, especially in this day and age. The internet exists. It is our job to do research. You can find out for yourself. They don't have to guide us in anything. It is our job to do our research and to take responsibility to do this ourselves. We have to do this, not them. No one is asking you to be perfect. They're just asking you to say and do something, anything. Just don't be silent. Silence is complacency. Silence is violence. And silence is very loud.